Hi, my name is Garrett and I work in the tech support department at G&D Chillers. Uh, I want to go over a few common questions that I get here on the phones and the first one is going to be sizing a breaker for your chiller. So here on your spec sticker on the chiller, you're going to have two values. You're going to have your MCA and your MOC. Your MCA stands for minimum circuit amperage and your MOC stands for maximum overcurrent. You're going to want to size your breaker between these two values. So for instance, this MCA is 42.3 and this MOC is 69.2. So if I was to size a breaker for this chiller, I would go with a 50 or a 60 amp breaker. Another common question I get in the tech support department is how to fill up my system with glycol. So there's three things you're going to have to look at for this. You're going to have to get your reservoir volume. You're going to have to get your pipe volume. And there's really good calculators on the internet for that that will just ask you for your run length and the diameter and calculate that volume for you. And then you're going to need the volume in your tank jackets. You're going to get those three values. You're going to combine them for the total volume of your system. And then you're going to times that by 0.35, which is our 35% glycol mixture, to see how much glycol you actually needed. All right, once you find out the total volume of your system and you times that by 0.35, that will give you a 35% mixture. Now, it's important to know uh, if you're reading with a refractometer, it has a bricks value. That 35% is 26.5 bricks or a plus 2 Fahrenheit freezing point. Now it's very important that you use propylene glycol with inhibitors. Uh, the glycol we offer here at G&D is 97% uh, pure with that 3% being those inhibitors to prevent organic growth, rust, and corrosion. Another common question I get is chiller placement and the clearances around the chiller. So when you're placing a chiller, we want to make sure it's on a flat pad, it's level and secure. Now, the regulations from city to city vary, so make sure you check with your city code on what they want. Now, as far as clearances go, it's very, very important. On this horizontal air chiller, you're going to want two feet on the back side, and on the front side, you're going to want it open completely to free air. You don't want that hot air that's escaping from those fans to hit anything and recycle back into the chiller, so we want nothing in front of the chiller at all. Sometimes I get calls saying that they want to protect the chiller from the public and what I'll tell them is that if you have to have a fence, make sure it's a chain link fence but no slats because again we want that hot air exhausting away from the chiller. Another style of chiller that we have is a VA and stands for vertical air. Uh, this is going to be exhausting the air straight up into the sky. Um, as far as clearances for these types of chillers, you obviously don't want any obstructions above the fans. And as far as serviceability for these chillers, we're going to want one condenser width on all four sides. Another common question I get here in tech support is questions about our bypass valves. So if you see here, this valve with this water spigot handle is a bypass valve. And what this does is it regulates pressure to your process. But it's important to note for these chillers with a single pump that it has another function. It's also regulating the flow through the evaporator. So not only is it regulating flow to your tanks, it's also making sure there's the right heat exchanger in that evaporator. Typically they're set at 20 PSI. If you ever need to feel like you need to adjust them, please call us in tech support. It's also very important to note that you t check your tank jacket pressure ratings. If it happens to be lower than that 20 PSI set point that we set our bypass valves at, you need to call us so we can adjust that down. On our dual pump chillers, our bypass valve only regulates the pressure to your process. Now they're typically going to be set a little bit higher than the PLC and the VFD. If you have any questions, please contact the tech support department. Another common question I get in tech support are questions about the Y strainers. The function of the Y strainer is to prevent debris and contaminants from your process piping and getting back into the chiller. When this happens, it can get into the reservoir and get sucked into your heat exchanger and foul your heat exchanger. And it's a big, expensive overhaul to fix that. Uh, these strainers go on the return line right before the chiller. And there's a screen in there that's rated 20 mesh. And so you got to make sure it is a 20 mesh screen. And typically, when you're sizing your Y strainer, you're going to do one size bigger than your trunk line. So if your main line is 2 inches, you would go with a 3 inch Y strainer. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any other questions or concerns, don't hesitate to call the tech support department. We're available for you 24-7 and are happy to help.